Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the new power of making a magic string. We are re-implementing our old tree class, but now instead of having a print, we're doing the very object-oriented thing of having a magic string. Otherwise, the code is the same. The string returns the string when the print printed it. Returning it is much more useful. That will usually be in your spec. We have a forest class. The forest can either be large, medium, or small. And that is all that can be put into the initializer. So here on line 41, we're going to make a small forest. Small comes into the magic initializer. That size is small, and it is in there. There it is, small. So we're happy. We're not going to raise that value error. We're going to set that small size in there. And then we're going to decide how many trees we get. If size is large, if size is medium, else two. So we only get two trees. We're going to make a list of our two trees by counting through that number, zero, one. The tree height, I'm going to make it a random height between 1 and 199. And now I have my two trees for my small. I'm going to print it. When we print our forest, we go into the magic string. And it is going to concoct a string that we want for our answer when it's printed. So we'll call it say. And that's how we'll start with the size of the forest and how many trees. And now we're going to make a comma join of the string of each of the trees. We got to go up and look at that. The string of each of the trees reports that it is a tree and its height. So all two of those got represented here. And we returned that, and that's what got printed. Let's look at it. I did it with an F string. Same thing. We did it with a str format, same thing. Format replacement, same thing. And just calling string on it, same thing. So that's a very powerful little piece of magic for you to add to your class definitions. For this optional and difficult assignment, we're going to make a directory tree. In every directory, there are files and there are other directories. Whatever they are, they are nodes. That's the general name for a file or a directory. So we'll make a node class. We'll have a file node that inherits from the node class and a dir node that inherits from the node class. And we have the tree class, which is a container that keeps track of all the nodes. Looks take a look at our main. If we have an argument on our command line, then the dir name will be that argument. Otherwise, we ask for one. If our user did not give us one, then we're going to do the current directory. We're going to instantiate the tree with the dir name, and we're going to then print it. So we'll look at the instantiation. Start at. That's the directory that we're starting our tree at. We'll keep a list of all our directory nodes. We are, after all, a container type. We see here a nested function is good. Only this instantiator can see that. We're going to do our regular walk, starting where we do. And then this dir is a dir, and that'll be our new dir we'll make a directory node out of it. To make a directory node, we push up to the node's magic initializer. Notice that there is, in the node class definition, a too many slashes at the class level that starts as a none. In this magic initializer, the dir name comes in. We save it. Now we're going to count how many slashes there are using the count on the OS separator so we get the proper slash. And then we're going to say that the root dir is false, because almost always it is. But if too many slashes is none, 
That's only the first time because we immediately change it to that number of slashes minus one. Too many slashes, since this is the first directory, would be any fewer than are on the first directory. Otherwise, you should always have more slashes. So our too many slashes will be that number of slashes minus one. And yes, this is the root dir. And from now on, this has a number in it. Therefore, we'll never come in this part of the code again. And all the other durs will be not the root dir. After running the magic initializer of the node, we then make our empty list for containing everything in that directory. And the number of slashes for this directory will be minus a too many slashes. So for the first one, so for the first one, we had the number of slashes given up here is the number of slashes, but we're going to trim off any slashes that are to the left of the starting directory. And so this algorithm means in the starting directory, the number of slashes are zero, and that's what will get printed out. No slashes. Alrighty, going back to our tree def, where we're doing this walk, we just made the dir node that came out as this dir. Now then, we're going to add that dir to our list of dir nodes. We're going to go through all the files, sorted. We're going to ask, is that a good file? Is that something we want to consider? If it is not, we'll go get the next file. Otherwise, we will ask our directory node to add this file. What file? We will make a file node of our new directory, what we're adding it to, and the file name. Let's take a quick look at is good. I didn't want to consider any files that ended with a pound sign or a squiggly or a PYC. They come from various tools. This comes out of the Python interpreter itself. We don't want any that start with a pound sign or a dot. So here's how we do it. The file name comes in here. And for each of the enders in the bad enders, that's that. If our file name ends with it, we return false. Then we do the same thing with our starters. If the file name starts with it, we return false. Otherwise, we return true. So that's how we decide if it's a good file or not. The only thing we have not yet looked at is the instantiation of a file node. So let's go do that. We asked our current directory node to add file node. Here it is. So we add the file node onto our list of file nodes. And the file node came in because we instantiated it down there. We And that called this instantiator, which also went up to the node instantiator and did that slashes thing. We calculated the whole path. And we kept the name of the file name. And how many slashes will be on that? We'll just subtract off the too many slashes. We're set. Now, the tree has been constructed. We will print it. Printing it means we go to the tree, and we call that magic string. It will return a string that will get printed. The return string, we're going to start making it here by the new line join of making the string for each of the dir notes. And we are going to sort them by the directory name. So once again, we are calling str on each of our dir notes. What we're going to return is the big complex thing that came out of that. And then we're going to give these little reports about how many directories and a field of four. Then all the files we saw by summing up this list comprehension. Here we're seeing the file nodes, and that's the list of files in each dir node. We take the len of that, and then we add them all up. So that's all our files. OK, now we have to look at the magic string for each of our dir nodes. The magic string for a dir node is going to call the node's magic string. 
If it is a root dir, it's going to return an empty string. Otherwise, it's going to return this for however many slashes there are, plus some dashes. So I'm making a fancy output that is the tree. And that's what we have here. We'll add the directory name and then a slash, the appropriate slash. The files part, we're going to do the string of each file. Going up here, it does the node part again, and then we add the name of the file. When we did the new line join of the files part, if there is a files part, then we tack it on to our return string. Otherwise, we just return our return string. And that's how we achieve that output. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.